In today's tutorial, we're gonna do text particles using Trapcode Particular Plugin. Before we start, just make sure you have a composition that has a text layer and a solid layer. So this one is basically just a solid layer. And then let's go into your effects and preset and look for your particular plugin and drop that onto your solid layer. Now, before we go inside the trap code particular, make sure your text layer is set to 3D layer. So just click on this box over here and then you can just hide your text layer. Now let's go into the particular plugin. Click on this designer button. Now let's start with this emitter type. For the emitter type on the right here, click on the drop down menu and then select text slash mask and then go down to this layer change that to your text layer which in my case it's called text particles and then i want to change the particles per second to 4000 so we just we'll just have a lot of particles and then you can change the emit from faces or edges so the edges is basically just the edge of the text and faces is the whole solid of the text i'm just gonna leave it as faces for now now let's move on to motion now change the velocity to one and now you're starting to see the particles. Now I also want to change the velocity over life. So I'm just going to use a preset. So I'm going to choose the second one here. And then I'm going to click on my pen tool over here. And I'm just going to drag this second point to the top. Now I'm going to change the velocity random to 100 as well. So that there's a bit of variation in the velocity. Let's move on to particle type. So for the live seconds, I'm going to change it to 15. And then for the particle type, we're going to use Sprite for this. So click Sprite. And then now on the Sprite controls, choose the Sprite. I'm just going to use an existing Sprite from the library. And I'm just going to choose this blob under light and magic. Obviously, you can use whatever you want. Now, as you see, the animation lags a little bit. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go back to emitter meter type and I'm going to reduce the particles per second to 100 for now. This is not exactly the look that we want, but we're just going to leave it as 100 for now because it just takes less time to render. Now let's go to size slash rotation. For the size, I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it as 5 for now. And then I'm going to bump up the size random to 100 so that there's a bit of variation. And then let's go into color. Now for color, I'm going to double click on this block here so that it brings up this block presets. I'm just going to choose this neon highlights. Obviously, you can adjust your colors as you want. So obviously, once I double click on that color preset, the color still doesn't change. That's because sometimes you need to change the settings and the particle type. So if you go back to particle type, I need to change the setting called colorize to 100. Now the color has changed according to my color preset. Now I'm going to go back to emitter type and bump the particles per second back to 4000. It's gonna lag a little bit, especially if your computer is not as powerful. So the less particles per second, the faster it would render. And I'm gonna hit apply. So it looks like that, but if you look closer, it looks like it has a block, like a black block here. That's because we need to set the mode to screen. So I'm gonna go back inside the designer. And then I'm gonna go to particle type. And then under blend mode here, I'm going to change normal to screen. So that way the black blocks will kind of like screen over the other particles. So that's looking better now. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to turn the resolution back to quarter just so that it renders a bit faster. So as you can see here, I have my solid layer starting from the middle, not from the start. So I'm going to put it back to the start by hitting open square bracket. So now you might not see anything at the start. That's just because it starts from zero. So basically it'll kind of like come in like that. In order to create keyframe, you have to go through this interface manually. So not through designer, just through here. So what I'm going to do firstly is to animate the amount of particles per second. So under emitter, I'm going to click on the stopwatch icon. I'm going to hit you to show the keyframe. And I'm going to go to about three seconds. 
I'm gonna create another keyframe there, go back to the first keyframe, and then I'm gonna change that to zero. And then I'm gonna go under environment, under air turbulence, and I'm gonna animate the effect position here. So click on the stopwatch icon and then click you again on the solid layer to show the keyframe. I'm gonna go to three second here and I'm gonna create another keyframe and go back to the first keyframe and I'm just gonna bump it up to maybe let's see how 200 looks like so i'm just gonna play it now so the effect position is basically it's just kind of like making turbulence in the air and it's just affecting the position of each particles so that's enough for now so basically it looks like that the particles kind of like move around at first but then slowly it'll kind of like settle at the end now I'm also going to animate the wind X, so I'm going to create a stopwatch and then double click on you twice to show the keyframe and then go to 3 second and then create another keyframe, go back to the first keyframe again. I'm going to bump up the wind X to about 150. So that way the particles just kind of like blowing to the right. Now I'm going to go under displace here, so click on the arrow to show the settings and then click on the arrow on drift. I'm going to create a keyframe on drift X and then click you twice again on the solid layer and then create the first keyframe here and then drift X I'm going to do a minus about minus 200 or something. I'm going to turn the resolution back to full and I'm going to just preview it to show you what it looks like. So that's looking pretty good. The only thing is that towards the end, I feel like you can't really read the P, A and like the E, S over here. So I'm going to fix that. Okay, so I don't know why this does this, but basically if you go under emitter and then go under text slash mass emitter, you see this match text slash mass size. If you uncheck that and then basically check that again, it just fix it. I'm not sure what does it, that works. Yeah, so that's how you create text particles using particular plugin. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you next time.